Praise God. We're back again tonight um, by the special grace of God. We are going to be studying something different, unique from what we've been studying from the onset. I believe tonight is a night where the Lord is going to be speaking to various set of people uh, through His Word. I will give God all the praise. Now, I'm in the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm going to be reading from verse 1. Here the Bible says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Tonight I want to speak to you tonight, my brothers and sisters. Uh, Apostle Paul is saying here, I, couldn't, I wish I could speak to you as spiritual people, as matured people, as people who have grown in the Lord, as people who are matured, who have been nurtured in the Word of God. He said, but unfortunately, I could not speak to you as spiritual, but as unto carnal. Tonight, I'm asking you, should I speak to you as spiritual or should I speak to you as carnal? Are you a spiritually matured Christian? Or since you have been born again, or since you have known the Lord, you have remained carnal in your own carnality, in your own flesh. You have not allowed your flesh to be transformed. You have not given yourself an opportunity for growth. You have remained the same. You still do the things you used to do. You still talk the way you used to talk. There has not been any appreciable change in your Christian life. People who knew you 10 years ago as an unbeliever, now they know you now. They've seen you again as a Christian, but they could not differentiate. They could not tell of any single difference in the way you were before and the way you are now. If that is true, then you are a carnal Christian. Should I speak to you as spiritual or should I speak to you as carnal? If you are carnal and you are a Christian, that you are still mindful of the, uh, you are mindful of material things. You are mindful of things of the world. You are mindful to go to where people, uh, other people go to. You are mindful of things, of, 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 of personal things, of worldly things, of fleshly things. Then you are carnal. You are a carnal Christian. When would you learn to grow? If you find yourself as a Christian who is full of gossip, then you are a carnal Christian. If you find yourself as a Christian who cannot forgive another brethren, then you are a carnal Christian. You are, if you find yourself, are you such a Christian who cannot, who cannot repent, who cannot even say sorry to when you are wrong, then you are a carnal Christian. Are you a Christian who know how to correct others, but you will not take corrections when you are wrong? You are a carnal Christian. When would you mature? When would you mature? When would you grow? Have you remained the same way you have been all along for one year, for two years, for three years? Others have met you. People who are not Christians, they met you as a Christian. And now they've gone from carnality to spiritualism. They've grown from being immature to mature. But you are still at the same spot. You are still complaining. Somebody step on me. Somebody call me name. Somebody look at me. Somebody snap at me. Somebody, you complain about everybody in church. You complain about your pastor. You complain about your church. You complain about your neighbor. You complain about your boss. You complain about everything. You are a complainer. And you complain about everything. If you are such a Christian, then you are a carnal Christian. You, you judge everybody. You don't give anybody a chance. You don't give anybody a chance. You are always all about yourself. Then you are a carnal Christian. When will you grow? Do you want to remain the way you are? Imagine if you have a child or you have a son or a, or a daughter and your daughter uh, two years or maybe one year is is not crawling. It becomes two years. It's not crawling. It becomes three years. It's not crawling. How much more walking would you be happy? Most of you as Christians, you have remained at the same spot. You are not crawling. 
you are not jumping, you are not walking, you have remained at the same spot, and others who are not, who even met you as a Christian, Muslims met you as a Christian, uh, Buddhists met you as a, as a Christian, they converted, they became Christian, they are serving the Lord, they are more matured, they've gone from point A to point B, they've matured from what they used to be, to what they are now, but you have remained the same, and people call you Christian, you call yourself Christian, and unbelievers are looking around, who are they talking about? Because they can't see Christianity in you. And are you, are you not Kana? Where would you change? Where would you change? Your pastor correct you, you are hungry. People in church, your HOD in the church correct you, you are hungry. You don't take correction. You don't take. You don't. You don't, you don't want anybody to correct you. You don't want. You can't say sorry. Even when you are wrong, nobody should must tell you sorry. Nobody must tell you the truth. But when they lie to you, you are happy with it. You are a Christian that believe in lies. That believe in deceit. That believe in people deceiving you, lying to you. Then you are a carnal Christian. You enjoy being told what you want to hear. But when people tell you the gospel truth, they they they've struck a chord in you. Then you are a carnal Christian. Where will you grow? Where will you go? Where will you grow from this level? Apostle Paul said, I cannot speak to you as a spirit, as, as, as sort of spirit, spiritual. I can't speak unto you, but God is spirit, and they that must worship him must worship him not as carnal, but as spiritual. But Apostle Paul said, I cannot even relate to you at that level because you are too baby. That I cannot speak to you the way God will have spoken to you. So I have to speak to you as, as people who are not at the level that God wants them to be. I have to speak to you as scanner. Is that fair? Ask your neighbor as you're watching me, when will you grow? Are you growing? You complain about everything. You are angry about everything. You are angry about everything. Where will you grow? Let's go further. He said, but as unto canal, even as unto babes. Oh, you can see the way he the way he qualifies you. You are a babe. You are like a baby. A baby in the Lord. Do you know when you call some people, when you call a man that is 15 years, or a man that is 50 years, or a boy that is 15 or 20 years, if you call him a baby, do you know how he feels? If he gets angry. How can you be 35 years in ministry, 35 years in church, 35 years in the Lord, 35 years studying the Bible, or 5 years studying the Bible, and you are still a baby? You are still a baby. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Can't you think? When would you change? When will you change? Look at what Apostle Paul said. He said, verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. You are, at this stage, you are not supposed to be eating milk. But, but Apostle Paul did not have a choice. He had to feed you with milk of the word. Because if he fed you with meat, you will not be able to chew it. How long will we stop? How long will we stop Talking about repentance from sin. For you, a Christian. You are still living in sin. The Bible says, sin shall not have dominion over you. But you are allowing sin to dominate you. The Bible says, he that is born of God, sinneth not. And he that is begotten of, the, uh, of God, he said, he that is begotten of son, uh, uh, separated himself. And the wicked one toucheth him not. He keepeth himself. He separate himself. And the wicked won't touch him not. We are not meant to be telling you to confess your sin at this level. I'm not talking to babies. I'm talking to mature Christians. To, at this stage, we shouldn't be telling you, let's talk, about, let's talk about what you've done. Let's go for counseling. Go for counseling. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? These are things that we should be telling babies. We are still telling you after 10 years in the ministry, after 10 years in church, after 10 years studying the Bible, it means you have not grown. What is wrong with you? Ask yourself, what's wrong with me? You have not grown. At this 
think we should be going to the next level. We should be going to something bigger. We should be going to something. We should be going to something bigger than just confess your sin, repent of your sin, confess your, confess your sin, repent of your sins. At this stage, the Bible says, I fed you with milk and not with meat. For it at all, ye were not able to bear it, even though at this level of giving you milk, you are still not even yet able to bear it. So are you le so are you saying that you are even less than a baby? That's what he's saying. Don't you know that this is to your shame? That are you saying that we cannot discuss as brothers as brothers and sisters we cannot discuss as human beings we cannot discuss as sons of god and come to a, an agreement to reach an agreement together are you saying we cannot be we cannot be sensible enough to appreciate god you have heard the word of god the word of god has been spoken to you has been preached to you in church ask yourself if you are carnal you will know in a minute let me ask you how many word of god have you had in the church that has changed you are you just somebody that hears the word of God and the word of God does not change you? You hear so what's the point of hearing the word of God if you are not going to allow it to change you? It's because you are carnal. You are carnal. You are carnal. You must change your ways. Examine your ways tonight. Examine your way. Check yourself tonight. I, I'm I'm like the, the word of God says. I'm not telling you this word is not meant to. To, for you to, to, to sit down and say, oh, I feel so bad. No, I'm not here to make you feel bad. But if you feel bad, bad if, if it's a holy sorrow, praise God. If it makes you to tear your heart, praise God. If it makes you to repent of your sins, praise God. If it makes you to, to change your ways, praise God. Let it produce results. We want results in your life because we love you. We cannot speak to you as babies. We cannot pamper you anymore. We are not here to pamper you. We are here to tell you the gospel truth. Take it or leave it. Accept Jesus or you leave him alone. But if you are willing and you want him to help you, he wants to help you because he loves you. We are not going to pamper you. We are not going to, I know we know most of you that are kind of, you have itchy ears. We are not going to speak to your itchy ears. We are going to tell you the gospel truth. You must receive it if you are truly a son or a daughter of God. The Bible says, He that the Father loves, He chastises. God chasing those He loves. So that's why I'm speaking to you as somebody that God loves. I'm not pampering you because God will not pamper you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For ye are yet carnal. Now, he wants to define what it means by carnality. He said, but ye are yet carnal. For whereas, now look at it now, brethren, and I see this happening in your church, and your pastors are watching me now, I'm going to be coming to you in a minute. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas, there is among you, in your church, one, envy Anywhere, pastor, you see envying in your church, it is because your church members are carnal. If you see envying amongst ministers of God that are pastors, they envy one another, it is because they are carnal. The members, the sheep may be carnal. The pastors that head the church may be carnal. So it is carnality leading carnality. Carnal men leading carnal people. So, he's saying that if you find among you envy, if anybody is envying another person, it is carnality. And strife. Striving over what? Struggling over sheep, pastors? Are you struggling over some other sheep? It's my sheep. She's my sheep. She was in my church. She's now in another church. And you are angry with another person. It is called carnality. You are angry over what God is doing. The person has not gone away. He has only left your church. Has not gone into this. Into in, in, uh, He has not gone back into the world. He's gone back to another church. And you are striving. You are angry with that pastor over such. It's because you are carnal. Because if you have been feeding your own sheep 
well with the right word, with balanced words, your sheep will not go astray. Your sheep, the reason why we call them sheep is because sheep is always looking for where the grass is green. If you don't provide the green grass, your sheep will all go away. Pastors, your sheep will go, you will go to places where they will be fed what they want, where they will be fed what they will make them grow. You have a responsibility to make sure you are feeding your sheep well. But after that, if your sheep go away from you, then it's not your sheep. The Bible tells us that they went out from amongst us because they were not part of us. If they were part of us, they would not have gone away from us and they would have stayed with us. But they went out from among us. That's what First, First, uh, First John says. They went out from amongst us because they were not part of us. So if somebody left you because you are preaching the gospel, you are preaching the truth, it's because they are not part of you. They were just part of the con congregation, the crowd, the mixed multitude. But they were not part of yours. If they were part of your sheep, the Bible says, He that the Father, he said, All that the Father has given me, I've kept them. He said, No man can pluck them away out of my hand. I've kept them in thy word, in thy name. So no man can take anything away from you. They cannot take your sheep away from you. But if your sheep left you for some reason, it's because you need to check yourself. If you, after checking yourself, check the sheep as well. Hallelujah. So two things we've talked about that will show you if you're a canal. As a canal pastor, as a canal member, as a canal deacon, as a canal bishop, as a canal apostle, as a canal member, as a canal Christian. That is how to know. Are you envying anybody in the church? Are you envying anybody in the ministry? Are you striving with anybody in the ministry? Three. And divisions. Are you causing division amongst your members? Pastor? Or you members, are you causing division uh, in, 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 amidst your leaders? Are you causing division amongst your leaders in church? Or you pastors, are you causing division even amongst your own flocks? Or even within the pastors to pastors, are you causing division between pastor to pastor, between you and other pastors? If you are doing that, then you are a kind of minister. You are a kind of member. You are a kind of church uh, uh, goer. You are a kind of Christian. You are a kind of church. Are you causing division? You know, the Bible says in the book of um, Proverbs, chapter 6, reading from verse 16. It says, Six things does the Lord hate. It says, Yea, seven is an abomination before him. And then he started mentioning them one after the other. A proud look. Leg that hasty to do to come to, to do mischief. He said, He that's and the seventh one is he that so discord amongst brethren. Have you read that before? Many of you are sowing discord among brethren. Psalm 15 from one to hand says the same thing. Are you sowing bad seed among brethren? If you are doing such, repent of your ways tonight. Change of such tonight before it is too late because that is carnality. And if you continue in that life, then you have chosen to be a carnal, a carnal person and carnality is sin. It's unrighteousness. It's unrighteousness, unfaithfulness to God. Now, look at what Apostle Paul said. I've said three things. First one is, if you, if you find that you are envying other people, you are living a kind of Christian life. If you are striving with people, you are living a wrong Christian life, a kind of Christian life. Third one, if you are di bringing division between brethren, dividing the church, dividing your people, dividing pastors, dividing the leaders, dividing the members, you and look at the fourth one. Apostle Paul came here and said, he said, strife, okay, we talked about envying, strife, division. He said, I yet, I, I yet not canna and walk as men. Verse 4 say, for while one said, I am of, a, I am, I am of Paul. Another I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? 
what is God saying here? If you, if you, I'm in between churches, in between pastors, in between members. If today you start saying, "Oh, I'm for, I'm for this man of God, and I'm for that man of God," Apostle Paul is saying, "Are you not carnal? Did that man of God, did that general vassia die for you? Did that man of God, that other general vassia did die for you?" You are not for Paul. You are not for Apollos. You are for Christ. But as long as your focus is on men, is on general vassias, is on your pastor, is on human being, then you are carnal. You are looking unto man. Instead of looking unto Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. If your focus is on man, you have missed it. Because the best of man is a man. Man will promise you sincerely, but they will fail you sincerely. No wonder many of you are hungry that those people you call men of God, those people you call mighty men of God, when they make one mistake, it affects your faith, it affects your, your, your trust, and then you say, I'm not coming to church again. How could pastor do this to me? Because why are you are going to church? You were looking unto man and not unto Jesus. You went to that church not because of Jesus, but because of that man. So when that man offends you, you run away. You are hungry. You are bitter. Hallelujah. I know some of you are also angry with Jesus himself. But Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 11, he said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. Are you still, are you offended in Jesus? Are you angry with Jesus? You are carnal. When you see carnal Christians, you can tell. By their fruits, you shall know them. You can tell, just by what I read now, you can check yourself already. You can see how you are striving with other people. You can see how you are envying other ministers. You can see how you are envying people. You say terrible things about them. You reduce them. You ridicule them. You abuse them. You insult them. And you know that all those things you are saying about them may not even be true. You know. You have, have you gone to check? But you haven't. Or if you have, what is the envy? Is there envy in it? Is there striving in it? Check yourself tonight. Check yourself tonight. Now look at what Apostle Paul says. He said, who then is Paul? Meaning that, who then is that general overseer? Who then is that pastor? That you are looking up and you are exalting and you are, you are magnifying them above Jesus. Who is that man? Who then is Paul? Who then is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed because they preached gospel to you, because they led you to Christ, because they brought you to their church, does not mean that you must worship and honor them and rest, and, 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 and above Jesus. You mustn't look, at, look, look onto them as the author and the finisher of your faith. The only person you have been instructed by the Spirit to look onto is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, not Paul. Paul says, don't look unto me. Apollo says, don't look unto me. Just look unto Jesus. But many of you are looking unto men. You are looking unto a church. You are looking unto people. And that's why you fail. You are a carnal Christian. You are, yes. You are, yes. You are a carnal Christian. Except you change tonight. Except you change your ways. And tell yourself the gospel truth. Paul will not save you. Pastor A, Pastor B, Pastor C, Bishop C, Bishop D, Bishop E, they will not save you. None of them will save you. If they die, they go on their own. And they leave you to continue your race. You must tell yourself the truth tonight. Look at what Apostle Paul said. I have planted Apollo watered. But God give the increase. One pastor has done a job upon you. Another job, pastor has done another job. But it is not them. It is the Lord that gives the increase. They've done their part, they've gone. No wonder many of you have gone to many churches. And a, a pastor brought you from point A to point B. Another pastor brought you from point B to point C. Another one brought you from point C to point D. Yes, that is the way it is. But the glory belongs to God because the increase comes from Him. If you must increase 
and not remain as a baby. The only way you must increase is to take your attention away from Paul and Apollos and then start concentrating on Jesus and then he will give you the increase. Paul has planted, but Paul cannot bring the increase. Apollo has planted, has watered, but he cannot bring the increase. But the increase must come from God. Verse 7, So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that given the increase. But God, but God, but God, but, but, but God. Not Paul, not Apollo, not Pastor. No, oh, my pastor, my pastor said, my pastor said, my pastor said, my, as my pastor said, my pastor, my pastor. Stop talking about your pastor. Stop, stop talking about Jesus said. Jesus said. Listen. Verse 8 says, He that planted and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Brethren, next week I want you to join me. I'm going to continue on this series. I'm going to start on this, that either plant and either water, they are one. I want you to see what the enemy has done to the church. When either plant and either water are meant to be working as one, now they are working in different ways. They are, not, they are not working for the same purpose anymore. They are not seeing the vision as the vision of God, but they are seeing it as the vision of self. That is what the enemy has done. But we want to bring solution to this. We want to bring result. We want to bring conclusion to this. So join me next Wednesday from 11 o'clock dot. Invite your friends. Invite your families. Invite people you want to, you want to share this word of God with. And these DVDs are free. Like all our DVDs are free. If you want a list of all the DVDs we've had, just go to our website. You'll see a list of all our sermons there. And um, send us email. I will send you a copy free. The Lord bless you. Stay blessed. You are a winner. In Jesus' mighty name.